Sounds really good to me. What about you? <laughs> uh, not bad. I will take that. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll take that. Anthony, thanks. Have you ever wondered what your house looked like 75 years ago or what it sold for in 1950? As were they exactly the kind of things that you can learn in the archives at Grand Rapids Main Public Library's branch downtown. Previously called the Special Collections Department, the Massive Archives will now be known as the Grand Rapids History Center. The rebrand is an effort to make the collection seem more approachable. We want anyone and everyone to come in and use our collections. It's hard to fathom just how much local history has been collected in the archives of the Grand Rapids Public Library. I think people find a lot of meaning in understanding their own history. Previously called the Special Collections Department, the library is trying to make their archives seem less intimidating to the average person with a curiosity for those who have come before. We realize that that sounded kind of jargony and that it's a little bit intimidating, it's not welcoming. Take the elevator to the fourth floor and you will find what will now be known as the Grand Rapids History Center. One of the more popular requests that we get is people who are interested in the history of their own house or a building that they work in or their neighborhood. Say you lived at Park Place Apartments, which happens to be just across from the library and you wanted to find out what it used to be. See, the owner was the Grand Rapids School of Bible and Music, and they were listing it for sale in 1959. It was a brick apartment house, Park Place. The best apartments available in the downtown area, according to them. Or maybe you wanted to know more about a notable person, say Mary Jane Dockery, the founder of Blandford Nature Center on the city's west side. Mary Jane Dockery's file. So there's miscellaneous articles in these files that kind of give you a sense of an introduction to a person or to a topic. The bulk of items go back to the 1830s. All of it the result of countless historians and librarians who have collected and cataloged the items over the last century and change. The cemetery index was done by the Daughters of the American Revolution. They went and looked at all of the gravestones in Kent County. Including decades of newspapers that are held on microfilm, a material that, if stored properly, can last up to 500 years. Yeah. There's photographs, there's documents, scrapbooks. We have over a million photographs. We have about 4,500 linear feet of collections. If material isn't readily available, there's always someone on staff in the History Center to help navigate your journey back in time. So if someone wants to look at an item from our archives, they fill out this request slip. This is the entrance to the Charcoal Inn from 1956. So it's a photograph from inside the Pantlin Hotel, which is now the Amway Grand. The library staff want this deep dive of a collection to be something that everyone in Grand Rapids can appreciate and knows how to access. You know, those of us that have worked here for over 10 years, we're still discovering things. It's really fun. So very cool collection of stuff. And we actually, I was there earlier today doing the story and had them look at at my house, this is what it looked like in 1966. It's really interesting and it really gives you a chance to take a look at who came before you yeah. and what this area really looked like and what things meant at the time. It's, it's fascinating. Uh, and there's so many older homes in Grand Rapids. I bet a lot of people could find interesting tidbits like that. It really their is. These are actually the real estate records they used to sell homes at the time. So it's yeah. not just famous buildings. It's your home, my home, all, yeah. all sorts of buildings are really cool. Yeah, awesome.